Hello, so let's work through this problem, worksheet 11. In the beginning here, uh, we'll read the question. Mario jumps with an initial velocity of 17.5 meters per second with an angle to the horizontal of 65 degrees. His initial height is 8 meters. So right away, there's quite a lot that we can get from this problem. We know that he's jumping, and we can see from the image that he must be in projectile motion which means that we know two things right away. Let me get some good colors here. We know because it's projectile, which means it's uh, in free fall with just some initial velocity. We know that AX is zero, so there's no acceleration in the X direction, left and right. And we know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so the only force on Mario right now is gravity. What we also know, because we've been given the initial speed, we know that we can find v1 in the x direction, and we know that we can find v1 in the y direction. The reason I know that we can find this is because if you look at this arrow here, just you can draw out the vector. We know that it's 17.5 meters per second in the you know, east-north direction, or right and up. We know the angle from the x-axis is 65 degrees. And so it becomes very simple through trig to find the components of this vector. Because we know it's a vector. It has magnitude and direction. And if it's a vector, we can find its components. This piece here is v1 in the y direction. This piece here on the right is v1 in the Sorry, this is v1 in the x direction, and the one horse, uh, vertically is the v1 in the y direction. v1 in the x direction is 17.5 cosine of 65. We use cosine because we're trying to find the adjacent side here. If we calculate that out, it'll give us our answer. So let me just get my calculator out here, make sure I'm in degrees because it's cosine of 65 degrees, not radians. And that gives me a speed of 7.395, so 7.40 meters per second in the x direction. So that's quite an important piece of information here. The vertical direction I'll draw above here, v1 in the y direction, is also 17.5 and trig 65, but the trig function that we use is sine. The reason we use the sine is because if we look at this triangle, if this is our angle here, then this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. And sine of an angle is the opposite of the hypotenuse. So given that we have the angle and we're looking for the opposite, we must be uh, able to rearrange this. It has everything we need. So to be more specific, we're looking for the opposite side. We have the hypotenuse and we have the angle, which means if we want the opposite side, we rearrange this formula using cross multiplication to give us this formula, which is why we'll see Vy equals h. What's our hypotenuse here? Well, it's 17.5 and then sine of the angle we've been given, which is 65 degrees. So that's, that's that whole story. Let me clear some of this now. If you want to go back through that, of course, you can always pause the video and rewind. It looks like I've run out of undos. So I'll just take a second to erase this. I don't want to clutter up our diagram here. This will be an interesting one. Okay. So just one second, I'll redraw. Okay. So I've got my information back on this. What we were doing was V1Y, so V1Y equals whatever this calculates out to, which is 17.5 sine 65. That's 15.86, or I'm going to round it to 15.9. So let me go ahead and make that a nice color so that we can refer back to it if we need to. <clears throat> okay, so now we have everything we need, really. At least we have almost everything listed that was given in the initial question. The other thing that I know is this. I know that the initial height is 8 meters. So what that really tells us is that from start to finish here, this is a displacement in the y direction, and 
we know from start to finish in this whole story it's actually going to be negative. So what we'll do later on is we're going to say this is dy is negative 8.0. And so these are a little bit aggressive colors. So let me make it a little bit nicer to, to look at. All right. So that's quite a lot of setup. Obviously, talking through it takes a lot longer than if you already know what you're doing. So what I did, I took the initial velocity, which was 17.5, broke it into two pieces. I took the initial angle to do that, and then I put down that it was 8 meters in height. And I know he's jumping, and so that means that I have projectile motion. So all my basics are set up. Now let's start the problem. The question is to find the maximum height reached. So the way I need to approach this is in order to find the maximum height, I need to know how my equations work. I know that from my equations, uh, I've got a horizontal distance here. I've got a vertical distance here. This will be one version of dy that I need to find. And then I need to find the max. It will be some dy that I find from my equations plus 8 meters. Why plus 8 meters? Well, this here is the dy on top that comes from my equations plus this piece here, which will be 8. So this whole thing here is the height that I want. Okay, that's the height d max. All right, so let's get rid of that. I don't need all that there. <clears throat> I want to find the maximum height, which again is this dy currently plus an 8, just to make it as clear as I can. Okay, so how am I going to find that? Well, I need to resort to looking at my equations list. Maybe I'll jot those down. I know that I have v2 equals v1 plus a2 at. That won't help us here. Maybe let's try another v2 formula. v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2ad. That one looks promising, actually, but I'll keep going. d equals v1t plus 1 half at squared. And then d is 1 half v1 plus v2 all times t. So one of these equations is going to be the jackpot here, and I'm pretty sure that this one here is what I need. So let me show you why. V2, well, at maximum height, at maximum height, that means V2 in the y direction is going to be zero, because Mario stops at the top before he comes back down. He doesn't stop in the horizontal direction. He keeps moving to the right this whole time. He's like moving to the right respect to the x-axis, but he does come up, stops a little bit there in the y direction, and come back down. Or if we just look at the y direction, he'll come up, stop at the top, and then come back down. So the whole point of me talking about that is v2 is 0. v1, I know. a, I know. d is what I'm looking for. So when I write out this formula here, v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2ad. Well, for the reasons I just said, this becomes 0. The v1 in the y direction, all of this is in the y direction. It would be separate for the x direction. v1 in the y direction is over here on top. So that was 15.9. I square it plus Two, what's acceleration in the y direction? Well, it's negative 9.80. That's from over here. And what am I missing? I'm missing displacement. Displacement, that's what I'm looking for. That's the max height. It's because of the way I've set this up, it's going to solve for the, uh, sorry, the height from where I started. If I rearrange this now, I'll bring the 15.9 to the other side. 15.9 squared. 15.9 squared is, oops, 15.9 squared is 252.81. So 
So negative 252.81 divided by 2 times negative 9.8 is 19.6. So negative 19.6. That will give our D here, our displacement. And so displacement is those things divided, 256.81 divided by 19.6. They're both negative, so it'll become positive as the answer. That's 12.9 meters. That is not the maximum height because, remember, I need this plus this. So I'll just go back up here and say d max equals 12.9, the one I just found, plus the 8 which is the original height that Mario was. Remember, he started at an original uh, initial height. D max is there for 20.9 meters. And that question is done. Okay, so a few different pieces going on. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. I did a lot of setup. Most of this question, you don't need any of these extra workings. You just can get to the basics. So let's see, what's next? The time to reach maximum height. Well, let's think about what I have. I'm looking for maximum height, which is T. Let's look at this formula. V2 at maximum height, could I know that? Yeah, it's zero. V1 in the beginning in the y direction, I know that, A and T. So actually the first equation is what I need to use. V2 equals V1 plus A2. At maximum height, remember, V or speed in the y direction is zero again. So this should come together pretty quick. Zero equals, this is all y direction, v1 in the y direction was 15.9. Remember that from earlier, 15.9. A, or acceleration in the y direction, always negative 9.8 for projectile motion. And t is the only missing variable. So t here, I'll just rearrange it quickly in my head, would be 15.9 divided by 9.80. You should pause the video and check that yourself if you don't know why, how I got that. It's just a bit of math. Solving for t. 15.9 divided by 9.8 is 1.62 seconds. That's our final answer for time at maximum height. So just so that you're clear on what's going on here, Mario in this case does go up and then down. Let me try that again. He starts at this initial height, he goes up and then comes back down. The time to reach maximum height is when he is at this point. How long did that take? Okay, that's all we're looking for. That is not the time to do the um, total flight time. It's not the total flight time. It's just to reach that height. So the next question is asking, find the total time of flight. So I need the time of flight from the beginning to the end. So again, this is a big jump. And in some of our problems, we ended up getting the time it took to get to this maximum height. And we're like, well, if I know this time, uh, maybe just say it's two on the left side here. Maybe students are saying, well, is this two? Is this second time too? Well, it's it's not because the motion on his way up is not equal to his motion on the way down. So he can't multiply by two. There must be another way, okay? So this is, no, not not that. Let me just pause this so I can clear this, turn the page. Okay, so let's recap what we know or what we can do here. Total time of flight is looking for t. So in a way, it's like t total, t from start to finish. So this is our start point over on the left side. He's going to end here. We want time. So let me just clear some of this. Oops. Racing. Let's just make a nicer diagram. You can rewind it if you want to see what I did. 
So T total, what do I know about this time of flight? Well, I know everything I knew before, all the accelerations, the initial speed and everything. So if you look at your equations in the y direction is what we have the most information about. So let me take this equation. It's a very common equation for looking for time. It works most of the time. And see what I have. Well, do I have distance or displacement? It turns out I do. I'll explain that in a second. V1 in the y direction, definitely. I've used it already, um, two times actually. Time, well, that's what I'm looking for. Acceleration in the y direction and time, that's what I'm looking for. So it looks here, because I have two question marks, it looks like I have two unknowns, but really, it's time that I'm looking for, which is the same unknown, just in two different places. And we don't see that a lot. We've only seen that maybe once now. Um, this is the first time in class that we've come across that. So how do we deal with it? I'm sorry for the computer being crazy here. How do we deal with that? Well, we need to use the quadratic formula because this is a quadratic. I know it's a quadratic because it has a square and those t terms, one of them did not cancel. So I need to deal with it. So let's put our numbers in and then we'll use the quadratic formula to solve for t. What do I know? I know that displacement was eight. From start to finish, it was eight meters. But because this is displacement, from start to finish, he's going down. And if he's going down, it's a negative. So what I'm trying to say here is displacement from start to finish is negative 8. V1 in the y direction is still 15.9. T, I'm looking for. 1 half. A in the y direction is negative 9.80. T, I'm looking for. I'm going to simplify this a little bit, so I'll keep everything that doesn't have a calculation as it was. Half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. I'm just going to ignore the zero for now. And still have the t's, but I'm getting more and more close to what I want. What I want is something that looks like the quadratic formula, which is this. This is from math class. Sometimes it'll be a capital A, a capital B, a capital C, it doesn't matter. How do I get it in that form? I'll move everything in my equation to the left side. Just move it over. If it crosses that equal sign here, it has to change sign. I'll keep my squared term in front because that's what's in the quadratic formula. I want to have 4.9 t squared minus 15.9 t minus 8. The 8 didn't move, by the way. The 8 stayed right here, and so it doesn't change sign. There is nothing left on the right side, which means it'll be equal to 0. And now, believe it or not, hopefully you believe, <laughs> this is our quadratic form. This will be our a term, or don't be confused with acceleration. That's a from the quadratic formula. b from the quadratic formula, and this one on the, right, on the right side is C from the quadratic formula. I'm talking about A, B, and C. The reason this is important, I can take those terms and put them right into the quadratic formula and solve it. By quadratic formula, I mean X, both of them, for plus and minus. This is the quadratic formula, negative V plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A. You would have to take this term, this term, and this term, and put a, b, and c into this formula if you wanted to solve for t. You can go ahead and do that. It'll, it actually isn't as much work as it seems like, but your calculator can do it if you have a Casio, which most of you taking physics 1100 or 1100 will have. So the steps for using the calculator, first things first, mode, second step, hit the number five. Third step, hit the number three. So mode five, three is really what we care about here. Those are the three steps. Why we do this is once you've hit those buttons, it'll give you a space to put in A, B, and C, and you just press enter and it'll solve it. So I'm gonna do that now. You can do it with me if you want. 4.9 for A, 
negative 15.9 for B, negative 8 for C. I've got them all in. I'm going to hit enter. And it says x1, which is our t1. t1 is 3.69. That sounds promising as a time. t2, I'm going to press enter again, is negative 0 0.44. Yeah, with a 3 for three sig figs. You have to reject this second time because we can't go back in time. We can only go forward. Reject the negative. And so our final answer here is just going to be T1 equals 3.69 seconds in the air. All right, hopefully that's clear. If, it, if something's not clear, just go back and rewatch the video and hopefully it'll become more clear. So that's the trickiest question, I think, on the worksheet. So be careful. Find the range. Well, range is another way of saying DX from start to finish. So if I draw a little diagram again, again, these don't take very long to draw, so you can always draw them. The, rela the range here, or dx, is from where he started to where he finished in the x direction. So we'll use this fancy equation again. And how do I know that? Well, first of all, I have a lot of experience with this. So I know ahead of time which we're going to use. But that doesn't mean that you can't figure it out yourself. Just think about all your equations. Think about these equations and think about what we know in the x direction. I need the range, and so it's either going to be this one, this one, or this one. Those are three equations. Just go one by one and see what we have. Do we have v2 in the x direction? Yes. Do we have v1 in the x direction? Yes. But if you try this formula, that acceleration is going to come out to zero, and it's going to break down. If you want to try it yourself, go ahead and try it. The third equation, I want range. Okay, that's an unknown. That's good. V1 in the x direction, I know. Time, I know. I just calculated it in part C. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. And so I will easily be able to solve for range from that equation. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to rewrite here that A in the x direction is zero. This is all in the x direction, by the way. What that will do is it'll cancel that whole term that's touching it, that goes to zero. So d in the x direction is just v1 in the x direction times time. There's no x and y direction for time, by the way. It's just, it is what it is. And that'll give me my answer. v1 in the x direction. That was 7.4 from up here. v1 in the x direction, 7.4. 7.4. Time from the previous question is 3.69 seconds. That will give me dx is 7.4 times 3.69. Oops. Okay, so this brings up a good point. My calculator now is in the equation mode. So to get back from that, I have to hit mode again and just hit 1. So mode 1. It goes back to comp mode, C-O-M-P. And, oops that will be what we need because it's computations, regular computations or regular math. So times 3.69, 7.4 times 3.69, 27.3 meters is our answer for range. If you're off by a decimal or so, it's not going to affect anything. Find the velocity of the Mario. We'll find the velocity of Mario just before he hits the flagpole. So find V2x, V2y, then find magnitude and direction. So V2x is equal to V1x because acceleration in the x direction is 0, which means it doesn't change, which we just used. It was 7.40. V2 in the y direction is what? Well, I know. So let's just do first step. V2 is equal to V1 plus AT. In the y direction here, I know V1 in the y direction. Um, I just was talking about it. It's 15.9. Sorry, I keep scrolling here. I should have written these down. 15.9 is where it starts. And then acceleration in the y direction, negative 9.80. The time from start to finish 
again is 3.69. And so V2 in the y direction, 15.9 plus negative 9.8 times 3.69. That gives me negative 20.26 or 20.3 meters per second. So you might be asking partway through this, why are we even getting these things? Well, at the end of his flight, so at this point up here on the diagram, he will be hitting the ground with some speed and it'll be in the direction of motion. So that's kind of the direction we're talking about here. He'll hit the ground with some speed, V2. We can't find that speed directly, but we can figure out the speed he was traveling at that time in the x direction and the speed he was traveling at that time in the y direction. And using vectors and our analysis, our resultant ideas, our trigonometry ideas, we can figure out what that magnitude and direction must be. So let's do that right now. Uh, we're looking for magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. Okie doke. So let's go back to what we know about vectors. We know that the resultant, which in this case will be v2, is v2y, is the square root of v2 in the x direction squared plus v2 in the y direction squared. So you should recognize this. Just put them in. This is 7.4 squared plus 20.3 squared. You can ignore the negative. So if I put that in, square root 7.4 squared 20.3 squared. 21.6 meters per second. That's how fast he's going. Full stop. This is this is that guy here. How do we get the angle? Well, normally it's the tan function. In fact, it's almost always the tan function for these questions. And it's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Some students memorize that it's y over x. That's usually the case, but not always. So it's good to think of opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is the y, the adjacent side is the x, and so we're good to go. We can put in the y one first and then x. What's v to y? It's negative 20.3. Ignore the negative. The x is 7.40. There's no negative there. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. Hit shift tan. 20.3 divided by 7.4. This is on the Casio calculator. The answer is 69.97, or I'll just give it an even 70. So at the end of the day, these are my angles. You can also say this is right, then down, because I put in, this is the way I drew my triangle. So I would say right, oops. Right, 70.0 degrees down. Or whatever you like, but I'll just say 70 degrees. It should be obvious if you draw a picture. Finally, a projectile is fired at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal with an initial speed of 30. So this is the story we're talking about. It has a 30 speed. The angle with the result of the horizontal is 60 degrees. And so it says, what is the horizontal component of the projectile's velocity after two seconds? Well, this is our V. Vx is what? Well, let's get that first. Vx, this is the adjacent side, so it's cosine 30.0, cosine of 60. Comes out to 15.0 meters per second. V1x is equal to V2x is equal to any x because acceleration in the x direction is zero. And we've seen that concept a few times now in the same worksheet. So final answer, it doesn't matter what time, it can be any time, it's always going to be 15 meters per second. So hopefully that's clear. 
Um, it looks like here there is a difference in the answer. Right, 65, 6, uh, 36.5 down. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it came out to that. It's possible I made a mistake in my um, answer key. But I recommend that you try the calculations yourself, and it's quite possible that this answer is not correct. It would maybe be right 70.0 degrees down. If I made that mistake, I'm very sorry. Okay, have a great day.